Hello, everybody, and welcome back into the Pillow Fort. Kind of a weird uh, day today that I'm kind of calling uh, Red Monday, let's say. Red for the, the ban stamp. Um, we've had four new bannings for the Commander format. This isn't something we have often, so when it does happen, it always kind of you know catches you out uh, by surprise. But today, I think, is extra true for hitting you hard with uh, what cards were banned and kind of the ramifications of what's going to happen now that this announcement has come through. So I will just read uh, briefly which one, which cards were banned, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about them. Um, Dockside Extortionist was banned. Jeweled Lotus was banned. Mana Crypt was banned. And Nadu Winged Wisdom was all, they were all banned from Commander. Um, now, as a budget player, I don't really play too many of these cards because of obviously how powerful they are. They demand a higher uh, price tag. But I myself, I don't really play these cards that often. Um, but at the same time, I know a huge, uh, number of people in the community do play these cards. And, uh, I just wanted to give some thoughts as well as some budget options that, you know, you can't really replace these, but just some stuff I'm going to throw out there. Just follow along with me. It'll be a little rambly. Um, when it comes to the reason for all of these being banned, you know, I'm not going to read the entire um little synopsis for each and every uh entry that they give however uh it's basically talking about the speeding up of the format and wanting to make games a little bit more stable which i i understand that reasoning i just don't know if banning all four of these at the same time was possibly the best move but i'm not even going to fully talk about my opinions on on this whole thing um, because I know just so many people are throwing opinions out there right now. So um, I will say something that I truly believe when it comes to at least three of the cards. Nadu, you know, has been on the tip of everybody, everybody's tongue. Hard, easy for me to say. Um, when it comes to saying, should we ban this card? Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about Nadu. I'm going to talk about the three other cards, um, which are all mana um, producers, and they are all major mana accelerators in the format. Uh, talking about Jewel Lotus, Mana Crypt, and Dockside Extortionist. I can't believe, as I'm saying that, again, I can't believe that those are banned, but this is the world we live in. So when it comes to, uh, I guess, my personal thoughts with these, like I said, being a budget player, I don't really play those that often. But what I will say is uh, even though they're high powered, even though though they're CEDH staples, I do think even for casual, some of those cards helped give people a better option to cast their giant uh, commanders. Like I think often we see a new commander and if it's four, five, six, especially seven, eight, all of those up, you just kind of get in that mindset of like someone showing you it being like, isn't this cool? It's like, yeah, but I don't know if I would ever play it. It's very expensive. Um, whereas those cards, the Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, especially because they can go in any deck and then Dockside, they could help accelerate you up to that level where you can then play these higher mana cost commanders because you know you can try and cast them. Um, not necessarily on curve because they, they of course, not, I wouldn't say cheated, but those cards definitely did push you up uh, above where they possibly should have been. But what I will say is it might have kept those really high cost commanders in line with some other people's moderately cost commanders. This is all rambling for me to say. I'm just going to give some budget options for mana accelerators that you can buy uh, if you need to pull these uh, you know, newly banned cards out of your deck. That way, you're not just dismantling an entire deck because you lost one, two, or three cards in it. Um, 
I'm going to say some of these cards and you're going to be like, of course, I know all of these cards. They're not Mana Crypt. They're not Jeweled Lotus. They're not Dockside. And that is true. They are definitely not. But they are ways if you uh, have specific strategies or in different colors to try and get a commander out, uh, you know, kind of in line with the rest of the table. And I'm going to start off by talking about one of my favorite cards, uh, Dark Ritual. Um, one black instant and it adds three black um yes this is not a new card at all it's from alpha i believe and um at the same time it's not anything that that's a secret to anybody but i will say i think it has fallen from by the wayside if that's how you say that um a little too much in recent years because one mana to get three is pretty strong even in this day and age and uh, i put it in most of my black decks to be able to just go you know turn one land turn two land into dark ritual cast a four mana commander or something like that i think it works very well and uh if you if you kind of just pass over dark ritual i would say don't do that speaking of rituals we have a calling ritual as well or colin ritual <laughs> um this is one that's four mana in Gulgari for a sorcery. Destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less. Uh, add black or green for each permanent destroyed this way. This is, again, just another thing where it's like, I don't know. Maybe you do have a really high cost commander in these colors and you're like, well, I have to take apart this eight mana, you know, commander deck. Well, maybe calling ritual and turn four or five or whatever you can you know put it down get all that mana right back and then cast your commander again just mana acceleration um to kind of prove that these cards are not as great as um jeweled lotus and mana crypt and dockside uh next up is lotho corrupt shireff and it is shireff lord of the rings um it is a white and a black it says it's a creature whenever a player casts their second spell each turn you lose one life and create a treasure token again this isn't going to uh you know slam out one of your commanders in one turn but if you have a higher costed commander put this down on turn two you might just chip away ever so slightly to get it out a little bit sooner seething song is kind of uh red's dark ritual in a way but this is three mana uh, for an instant that gives you five red um so say you have a five mana cost commander or um you know something in that route uh say you get to turn three and you want to cast your commander early turn three for a five mana commander is not the worst um you know maybe even turn four for if, if you have to splash another color in there um so Seething Song, again, very good budget option to just kind of ramp out a commander very quickly. Um, this one's kind of a workaround, but I like it a lot and it has really helped, uh, you know, ramp out bigger things in some of my games. Curse of Opulence. It's one red for an aura curse uh, whenever... The player who's cursed is attack. You create a gold and so does the player attacking that player. Um, if you have an aggressive deck, uh, putting this down turn one, you can attack on turn two, then turn three, you got two more mana. Say someone else has attacked, you got three mana. You know, it, it does build you up a little bit more to where you can then slam down a bigger commander if that's what your game plan is to just ramp out uh, those bigger creatures. Uh, High Tide is another older one. Uh, it's really good in mono blue and sometimes, uh, you know, two color decks that have a lot of blue in it. Uh, I'll just read it. It is one blue for an instant until end of turn. Whenever a player taps an island for mana, that player adds an additional blue. Um, so it doubles your, your islands and what they produce for a little bit. Um, I would say that you know, really take a look at what your deck uh, has in terms of colors or if it's mono blue and you're wanting to, you know, ramp out something uh, Urza or something a, a little bit crazy. Uh, finding 
uh, slot for high tide might be a way for just one mana to even if it doubles, you know, three islands, that's six mana. That's that's some good game. So just keep an eye out again for high tide. A card that is kind of in budget now. I'm, I'm keeping these around, you know, five uh, under ten dollars, hopefully. Um, Carpet of Flowers is a card that is kind of in budget now, I think just because of uh, it not being used that much anymore and then getting that reprint in the Doctor Who Commander decks. Uh, it's just a one green enchantment. At the beginning of each of your main phases, if you haven't added mana with this ability this turn, you may add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of islands target opponent controls. So again, we're talking about islands here. Um, Blue is played a lot in Commander, so you're probably going to have a good chance that someone across the way is playing blue, and for one green, you're able to, you know, say they have, well, again, let's say three islands like we did before. They have three islands, you're going to make three mana of any color. And something that's interesting about Carpet of Flowers is you add it on your main phases, not just your first one. So like that, at the beginning of each of your main phases, if you haven't added mana with this ability. So main phase one, you can play Carpet of Flowers, uh, combat, and then main phase two, all of a sudden you can pick somebody and make that mana that turn. So it's just something to keep an eye out for. If you have a deck and you know your meta plays a lot of blue, this might be something that you can slot in there. And then the last cards I'll talk about, um, because they are finally in budget, it's the medallions. Um, Sapphire medallion, jet medallion, etc. They were uh, printed in the new Modern Horizons set. Um, and they all went from like being pretty expensive to down to around five dollars i think all of them are below 10. and in the right deck once again these are all all of these are in the right deck um they are incredible because say for sapphire medallion blue spells you cast cost one less to cast for two mana and it's an artifact that's for the rest of the game basically unless this goes away everything you you cast is going to cost one less if it's that color and i think that we overlook that sometimes but i think this if, if you know we're seeing uh jeweled lotus and mana crypt and uh nadu and also dockside leave the format and we're looking to kind of uh bring down uh the cost of things in, in one way or another uh, taking another look at the medallion cycle might be uh, one of the biggest routes to go at this point. And I, I really do hope once again that uh, they stay in budget. A lot of the cards I just talked about stay in budget as a budget player. Again, I, I don't play the cards that got banned, but I, I will say that, um, oh yeah, my Henzi deck. Um, I almost forgot that I have a dock side in here. Listen, I, most of my decks are budget decks. Okay. I just, I got this in a random pre-con and I, I thought a Henzi deck would be a good place to put it because of all the sacrifice in it. But it was just, I didn't even play this deck that often. I'll be on, and I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take it out of the Henzi deck. Um, oh, look, I'm, I'm putting... I'm putting it all back together without even thinking about it. I'm going to take it out. I will take it out. But I hope while you guys are taking these cards out of your decks, um, you hope the, the sting might go a little bit away just by knowing that there's some other cards that can ramp out your bigger spells into the later game now that we lost such heavy hitters. Um, I want to say... If there's anybody in the CEDH community, I am waiting on bated breath to hear about what you guys are thinking when it comes to losing these staples in that format. Um, I know how crazy uh, this might be and rethinking an entire color pie shift because of red kind of going down in power level. So um, I want to hear what you guys have to think. I, I talked about it before i have an architect and i made a um 
uh, CEDH deck in there. I might make it public. I just wanted to give it a shot, and I will say uh, three of the four cards that just got banned were in that list. So I'm already kind of seeing like, oh man, what am I going to replace those? Is that deck even good? Should it have red in it? It's that's crazy. So I want to hear um, what you guys have to say uh, about the CEDH players and then the casual players. Was this a good move to ban all these cards or was it not? Uh, let me know what you have to say. And um, I got to go remove. I'm going to remove that dockside from my deck. All right. I'm not going to sit down and, and just play it and then be like, oh, I forgot. You know, <laughs> that, would, I, that would not be cool. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I'll do that later. See you guys next time in the fort.